the truth the truth is what we're after right i'm here to give you the truth with regards to pc specs when just starting out in cybersecurity. if you just like to know the specs and then leave the video here they are at least 16 gigabytes of ram at least a 9th gen i5 you'll do fine without a graphics card it's not necessary 256 gigabytes of space with a hdd or ssd that doesn't matter either you can get these specs in a really good machine that is the dell latitude e7440 which is about 270 us dollars at the time of this recording this is the laptop i've used it for a while and so i do recommend it now if you'd like to know more about the wires in the house stick around here before i get into it though i'd just like to make the point that you can make do with what you have in most cases at least you don't need high-end specs or equipment to excel in cybersecurity or any other field for that matter you might think it's not fair for me to say that because i kind of own a high-end machine but i did not have access to any of these things just a few months ago so i know what it's like to have a really low-end machine with that said let's get into it i have three laptops with me here well the third one's in the back powering the setup but i have these three machines to try show you where i'm coming from with regards to some of the points i'll be making these three machines are what i've used over the past couple of years the first one is an hp notebook i have no idea what model exactly but it is trash trust me utter trash i used it for almost three years from early 2018 to about late 2020 it's got eight gigabytes of ram an intel pentium n3700 i have no idea what that is it's got 250 gigabytes of ram and that's pretty much it pretty basic and slow the second laptop is the dell e latitude 7440 which is what i switched to late 2020 i've used this dell for a long time up until just a few weeks ago it currently has 16 gigabytes of ram an intel core i5 4310U and 256 gigabytes of space. I'd like to stress that it didn't come with the 16, but it is upgradable to 16 with two 8 gig sticks, and that is where it caps, unfortunately. Both these laptops served me well for whatever season I was in at the time, and I learned quite a decent amount of cybersecurity related stuff and practiced a decent amount as well from both machines. On the first one, that big purple dinosaur, I would only run my Kali Linux and I would allocate about three gigabytes of RAM or four to the machine, to the VM rather. It was super slow, trust me, it was super slow. And it would turn into somewhat of a heater, but it did manage to get me through some of my first boxes on Hack the Box and try hack me. But at the time I knew nothing, so I put Hack the Box aside pretty quickly. At the time as well, I was still in high school, so I didn't have as much time to dedicate to cyber, and I saw it just as a hobby, so I didn't really focus too much on it. But when I upgraded to this one, oof, I was impressed, I was impressed, no cap. Depending on where you're from, you might think these specs for this Dell E Latitude 7440 with like 16 gigabytes of RAM and an i5 aren't the best, but for me, coming from that purple dinosaur, this was pretty good for me. It was amazing. So when I got it, it had two four gigabyte RAM sticks, and then I switched to two eight gigabytes RAM sticks to make it 16. And I was, I was even more impressed. It would heat up pretty frequently, but that was never an issue for me since I had experienced worse with that purple dinosaur, of course. I went through the PH course last year with this machine as I was preparing for the PNPT, and I was able to build out the labs and practice on my machine properly for the most part. The lab includes the Windows machines and the new Kali Linux VM, so it's pretty beefy. And I said for the most part, because the setup was, it was rough, I won't even lie. I got my one. As you might know, Windows VMs are a problem. They're slow and beefy and just frustrating. So I'd have to allocate, I had to allocate, eight gigabytes of RAM to whatever VM I wanted to set up at the time. And then when I set that up, I switch it off, set up another one by allocating eight gigabytes to it, do what needs to be done. And then I switch it off and then fix the third one, do all the configurations, spin up another one while everything else is off. I couldn't even switch on Chrome or anything on my laptop. I had to use my phone to be Googling stuff and watching the videos for the course. And so you can imagine how bad it was. But once that was all done, 
I was able to allocate at least two gigabytes of RAM to each machine and then just leave them running in the background since all the configurations were complete. But, but when configuring at first, I tried to allocate like two or four gigabytes of RAM to each so that I have them all running at once. And yeah, that was how. I would click on something and wait for 10 seconds for it, the mouse to move, which was crazy, which was crazy. So I really don't understand why people would say you can do some stuff with like four or eight gigabytes of RAM. Don't believe that. Maybe you could, but I don't know what that would be or the level of patience you would have for that. So, like I said, once you set everything up, two gigabytes would be enough for each machine and you'd be able to cruise through the lab. <sighs> okay, at this point in my life, I've decided to build an even beefier home lab for practice, right? This is possible because of Day and Howard who have playlists on how to make a home lab for cybersecurity. I watched both just to see what the differences might be in their labs, but most of the configurations were the same except that Howard was using a server and then Day was using VMware. And I ended up going more of the Day route because this is more up to date. The point of this lab for me was to see how much noise I make when I'm doing a box, right? That way I can be as stealthy as possible, which is the goal, right? To be a red teamer. I'm also doing YouTube, of course, so I actually needed something I could edit pretty easily on. And so to do this, I needed a better machine. With this Dell laptop, I, editing was hell. Trust me, it was hell. It would take me hours to finish one video. And so I decided I actually really needed to upgrade. So I ended up upgrading to a Dell XPS 15 9510, which is currently running the setup in the back and it was expensive. Ah, it was, it was expensive. It was expensive, trust me. It cost me around $1,600, which is a lot. It's a lot, man. Yo, damn. I bought the base model with a graphics card so that I can at least upgrade myself for a fairly lesser price than actually buying something with 64 gigabytes of RAM, which would be about 4,200 maybe. I don't know, I don't remember. But it currently has 40 gigabytes of RAM, an 11th gen i7 11800H, wait, sorry, I have to read this part, a 512 gigabyte M2 PLC NVMe SSD, and an NVIDIA GeForce 3050. It does great with virtual machines and all that, so I'm able to build out the lab that I need to build. But when rendering a 4K video, <laughs> sounds like it's about to take off. That's why I shoot most of my videos in 1080p. By the way, did I mention that I want to start a series whereby I showcase cybersecurity desk setup, like the one behind me, which I will make a video about soon? Something like Setup Wars. In the meantime, you could submit pictures and videos of your desk setup on my website, link in the description. And you can also look out for my budget setup video, which I'll be making soon enough, like I said. All that being said, I'd just like to mention again that make do with what you have, which is what I did for a while and what I'm still doing today. If you don't have the money, hopefully someday you'll be able to save up enough and upgrade when you think you're due for an upgrade. But that's it for me. Until next time, stay out of trouble. Don't get hacked. Peace.